Hey guys, welcome back to the Kool Aid Podcast. Welcome back to another video match preview. Alaves versus Barcelona tomorrow. Is Barcelona going to give us happiness? That is the question. Um, answers no, guys. Barcelona's trash. But guys, um, let's get started on the video. Well, actually, before we get started on the video, guys, make sure to follow me on all my social media platforms. Make sure to check me out over there. That way you guys can stay up to date with everything that I do on the channel. Uh, but guys, let's get straight into the video and let's uh, look ahead towards Barcelona game against Alaves. And they're giving you a preview for that match. And guys, if you guys don't know, these are the times right around the world and you guys are able to tune in for the match. Unfortunately, there is going to be a watch long for tomorrow's match. And guys, I apologize for that. I just have some things going on for, for school. And so I will be a little preoccupied with then. Uh, but Barcelona's going to be playing at 6 30 local uh, time. Um, but you guys can see the times right around the world um, in which you guys are going to be able to watch the match. And uh, looking at the squad list uh, that Xavi has called up, um, there's one huge uh, inclusion, and that's of Inigo Martinez. Um, it's, it's so funny how one player. Is coming in, that being Inigo Martinez, but you have one player going out, and that being Ferran Torres, who is roughly going to be out for a month. He is a doubt for that game against uh, Napoli, but hopefully, maybe he can get there for the first leg, but it's a doubt. But I, if, if I'm Xavi and the Bar Barcelona medical team, I wouldn't rush that whatsoever. Um, but good news that Inigo Martinez has gotten the medical green light. He is He's been fantastic at the start of the season he's been out for the past i would say two to three months uh we basically haven't seen him since november and um it's it's great news to see him back uh but the rumored lineup for tomorrow's match uh is going to be iñaki peña in goal joel cancelo playing as the left back christensen araujo in the center back and then you have kunde at right back in the midfield, you're going to have O Romeo, Frankie Dion, Pedri, and Gundogan. You're basically going to have like a four-man midfield with a diamond. And up top, you're going to have Lewandowski and Lomino Mal. Now, this is the rumored lineup in, in that's been thrown around in the media. But this is not the lineup that I'd go with. I would personally look to rest Lamino Mal. Lamino Mal has been playing a lot of minutes recently. And he's been playing a couple, like a couple games of extra time. You're looking at that game against the Dele Club. Um, and he's gotten a lot of minutes so far in the past couple of games and this is a perfect opportunity to start Vitor Roque and there's also been some speculation that this, that this game against Alves could he could be his first start in a Barcelona jersey and I would do that um, but since Barcelona they're light in attack you'd obviously have to start Lewandowski alongside him and so you'd have Lewandowski and Vitor Roque as your striker partnership in the midfield I would go exactly like this I would have Oromeo and Frankie Dion giving that um, solidity in that midfield and you have Gundogan and Pedri as your most advanced midfielders in the defense this is something that Xavi he can uh, mess around with Christensen could he potentially be back in the lineup Paco Barci played fantastically well um, midweek against Osasuna you honestly couldn't tell that it was Pau and not Christensen in the lineup Paco Barci was absolutely fantastic but then again, would you want to play him for a second game uh, consecutively and just you know load him up with minutes? Uh, Arajo in the right back position. You also, you can put you can play Hector Fort there in that position, and you move Kunde to the center back. That's another option I'd go with. And if I'm looking at Xavi, that's actually the, uh, the option I'd go with. I'd have Cancelo as left back, uh, Arajo and Kunde as my center backs and Hector Four as my right back. I think um, that back line offers some versatility. Joao Cancelo could be that attacking fullback. And then uh, Hector Four, Rojo, and Kunde could be the players uh, who are staying back and defending. And uh, it, it, it's an exciting lineup um, that, that Barcelona have. Um, we wouldn't be having too many subs because um, <laughs> all of them are injured. But um, it's going to be a tough game against Osasuna. We are going away from home. But as you guys can see, they're currently 11th in the league. And uh, we need to get some points because looking at the league table, Barcelona, they're currently fourth, uh, tied on points with Atletico Madrid and two points ahead of Athletic Club. And uh, we're, two, whoa, um, no, we are 
eight points behind both, uh, but actually behind Girona and 10 points behind Real Madrid. That's a, that's a lot of points to make up. And um, Xavi spoke on this in his quotes, which we are going to talk about uh, just after this, but it, it's going to be tough to, to claw back. But, but continuing on, now looking at Xavi's quotes ahead of the match, they, these are some quotes in, in Xavi's uh, pre-match conference. Um, packed calendar and injuries. This is in response to the journalist asking him, why do you think that Barcelona, they're having so many injuries? And Xavi responded, pack calendar and injuries. What we are trying to do, what, what we are trying to work on is the prevention of injuries. I mean, it's not going well since literally the majority of our squad has gotten injured at one point or another. Gym control the physical loads, but injuries are part of the calendar. It's complicated. I understand that like injuries, they're, they're part of the game, obviously. These are professional footballers who play a lot of minutes, who play at a, in a top club where the physical intensity of the games is going to be very high. But the, the way that these players are getting injured and how most of them are muscle injuries and how a couple of them are relapses and these players, you know, for example, just look at Nico Martinez, a player who was given the medical green light, but just three minutes um, into the match, uh, after coming back, he gets injured again. That's not good news. I know Nico Martinez has been an injury-prone player, but still, the, the physical preparation that Barcelona uh, are doing, it needs to be better. Uh, continuing on with Xavi's quotes, it's not tiredness, mental health, or journalists. I feel like I have to leave on June the 30th. Nothing more. I already said my circumstances. I think it's the best thing for the club, but I will continue to watch football. I will continue to go to the Montjuic and camp now. I'm not tired of football. Far from it. Now, it's a good thing that Xavi is going to continue supporting the club, but I agree with Xavi that he does need to leave at the end of the summer. Um, just looking at how the season has gone, Barcelona, they just... They haven't been up to the standard. Barcelona, they haven't been playing any football. And we need to change the dynamic. We need a new coach, new tactics, and new players. And um, in, in this interview, you can see a little bit of frustration from Xavi. It, it seems like the media is getting to him. Um, maybe that's because he's been surrounded, you know, by the media and he's actually listened to it. Um, that's why I'm saying, like, hey, maybe a foreign coach, someone who comes in, doesn't really care about the media, can 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 do a little bit better. But um, it's definitely good um, that that Xavi will be leaving at the end of the season. Fun enough, in the video that I just made before, guys, um, Laporta came out and he said he actually wanted to... Um, if, if Xavi wasn't named Xavi, he would have sacked him already. And and that's crazy to think about just because like, like Laporta has been seeing what we're seeing. Just the results haven't been good enough. Uh, continuing on, uh, Xavi's going to be talking about Lucas Berval. Berval to Tottenham, it's the market, it's the economic issue. The 16-year-old players want to go directly to the first team. It's the market. And Barcelona, they currently can't offer Lucas Berval first team minutes. If he does go on into the first team, you're, you're going to be looking at a, a midfield with Frankie de Jong, Pedri, Gavi, Fermi Lopez, Gundogan. That midfield is stacked. And if Lucas Berval wants to develop as a player, I wouldn't think it's the right move. Obviously, for Barcelona, having a talented player playing for the, uh, our youth team would be a good option. But Lucas Berro, he wants to prioritize his development as a player and look for those first team minutes. So it's understandable why Lucas Berro is heading to Tottenham. Obviously, it's another player that Barcelona miss out and we can't sign. But it's not the end of the world as we can use that money to go and, and uh, save up for other signings in the summer. Uh, but continuing on, Xavi answers, can Barcelona still win La Liga? And I post the question to you guys, can we win? Can we still win La Liga? It's going to be very hard, but it's not impossible. Can Barcelona still win La Liga? We have Alaves tomorrow. It's going to be difficult. We have not done our homework at the moment. We have not been up to task. Madrid and Girona have been better than us, and that's true. I prefer to go step by step and focus on Alaves. And that's what Xavi and the team, they should be doing. They should be looking game by game and looking just to improve and just baby steps. Baby steps and improving. Just focus on the actual play and the results will come. Focus on finding a system that works because Xavi, he's been changing the system um, a lot in this, uh, in this past season and due to injuries, due to, due to suspensions, due to some circumstances. And uh, we haven't found what works. And... Um, if I'm Xavi, I'm just focusing on on building up a base and 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 just 
trying to 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 actually have this team play for something place because this team is dead in 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 regards to football um it doesn't play any football they're just cruising through games uh but continuing on the notes are made at the end of the season this regard like for example like your grades uh the grades and and your how good you do um the criticisms are made at the end of the season but these but those around barcelona make them week by week last year in october i was out and then we won a double i told the president and the club that, that the club needed a change for the sake of the entity i put the the, the good of the club first now this is where I, i'm saying that xavi he is a little bit frustrated at the media and he's having like a sort of, sort of like a, a breakdown because we've been hearing these sort of these quotes um circulating in the media ever since his announcement xavi has said he hasn't felt the, the support um he's he's felt like his work hasn't been valued and i completely disagree xavi i give you tremendous praise for what you did last season and when, and for you what you did coming into barcelona but the thing is when you're looking at how barcelona have been performing this year in the champions league and the league it just hasn't been good enough barcelona for the for the first time since 1930 have conceded uh five goals at home and in the past month we conceded more than we have in the entirety of last season but we've lost the supercopa de España, we lost the copa del rey and just the work hasn't been convincing and when you even look at the champions league guys we put in embarrassing performance against teams that we should be beating comfortably when you think about the games against Shakhtar, we lost against Shakhtar Donetsk. look at the games against royal antwerp look at the games against uh porto where we're struggling where we have to crawl back into these games these are games in which Barcelona should be winning comfortably, and they haven't done that. The results, they're just not there. And last year, when Barcelona were, were knocked out of the Champions League, and when a lot of people were saying, you know, Xavi out, Xavi out, the thing was, is that Barcelona were doing amazing in the league. We were top of the league, and or, or at least competing with Real Madrid, and we were knocked out to, for example, Bayern Munich and Inter. You know, we weren't knocked out against FC Porto or... or and Royal Antwerp. That wasn't our group. We were matched up in a hard group last year, and it's understandable why someone would be knocked out. Um, of course, it, it's embarrassing that Barcelona went to Europa League, but it's understandable. Just the performances in the football that we've been playing this season is completely different to what's um, been, you know, that was being played last season. And Barcelona, they can't be continuing like this because due to all the levers that we pulled, due to the um, money that the board has put into the club, that, that that's they basically mortgaged, you know, Barcelona, they need to win now. And, un you know, unless Xavi can do that, then maybe he's not the right man for the job. Uh, but continuing on with Xavi's quotes, he's talking about Robert Lewandowski. Uh, from Robert Lewandowski, I can tell you that he is exemplary. He's always looking for improvement. He comes to talk to me for many times. There are sensations of his body, and he knows it better than anyone. We have to help him. We are correcting it daily so that he can improve. I understand that with age, he has less spark but he has to play smarter we're helping him and he wants to let him himself be helped well here's the thing i it's it's great to see that robert Lewandowski knows that he's performing poorly and that he wants to improve that he wants to you know score the goals and do everything but if his performances aren't there on the pitch xavi you as a coach have to do what's better for the team and the club just like how you you stepping down is good for the club you have to know that Lewandowski, even if he's trying his hardest his hardest is not enough if his heart is not enough, you have to bench him. You have to bench Robert Lewandowski. His performances has not been up to par. I would say that he's probably been one of our worst players uh, throughout the entirety of the season, um, if not the worst. And just because look at the importance and the amount of minutes that Robert Lewandowski is playing. You can say that, you know, Oromeo is uh, a player who's done even worse than, than Robert Lewandowski. But the thing is, or Romeo has played a fraction of the minutes that Robert Lewandowski has played. And even then, he hasn't been as poorly. And this is where Xavi, you know, he needs to be bold and say, hey, I am sitting you down, Robert Lewandowski. You are not playing well. Go to the bench. Um, but guys, looking at the final quote uh, from Xavi, this is big. Uh, I think that the process of being Barcelona's coach doesn't compensate. Uh, it's my perception. They're struggling, and that causes wear and tear. The day-to-day -day is not enjoyable. I've seen it in many coaches. I've seen them suffer, even winning. That's why the other day I asked for a reflection in this regard. In another club, it does compensate to be a coach. Ar Ar Arasate told me that he enjoyed it from Monday to Friday. I didn't. 
And this is the big difference. In other countries, it is surely enjoyed, but not here. And that's and that's my reflection. That's what I told the president. Well, there is some merit to what Xavi is saying, but you have to understand that Barcelona is an extreme. It is one of the biggest clubs in the world. And that the man and and Xavi, you as a Barcelona player should know that the man's in Barcelona, they're bigger than any, any other club out there. Because just winning is not enough at Barcelona. You you even said it as soon as you came to Barcelona. You say, "Hey, what to stay here and play at Barcelona? It's a privilege, and and playing at Barcelona, you demand excellence. And if the players, if 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 the players, they need to be playing excellent, the manager also needs to be excellent. And the performances you put in are just simply not good enough." Um, this season and the demands of a top coach playing for Barcelona, you know, you're expected to win, of course, but it just trying to give, you know, Xavi sister some praise. You know, if Xavi was playing well, but not getting the results, I wouldn't be here, you know, crying saying, you know, Xavi out, Xavi out. No, if there was an actual, you know, like structure and you could see that this team was improving, even though that we weren't getting results, I'd understand, you know, like, hey, Xavi, it's understandable, you know. But the thing is, last season and this season, um, the performances, they haven't been great. But the thing is, at Barcelona last season, they were actually getting results. And when the results, they you know, they don't follow your, your performances, no, when your performances don't follow up your results, then you, you, you get in the situation that, that Barcelona are in right now. And just, I, I sense frustration from here from Xavi, and I don't know if this is the right um words that, that he, he should be saying he should understand that barcelona you know this is you know it comes with the job like for example if real madrid you know if they're having the season that we're having you know, they're fourth and you know they got knocked out of uh the Copa del Rey in the fashion that you lost in in 4-1 in, in, in that defeat would you think it's all right um but guys i i definitely you know I, I ranted a little there a little bit, but it definitely seems, you know, that that, that Xavi, he is, you know, frustrated that he is leaving this position. He he felt that his work isn't being valued. He's felt that he's, you know, he still had more to give, but it was the right time to go. Um, I, I definitely feel some frustration there from Xavi. But but looking at tomorrow's game against Osasuna, uh, no, not against Osasuna because that was our last game, but against Alaves, um, Barcelona need a reaction. Because we are going to be playing in the Champions League and we need to qualify for the next round because that money that we are going to be winning from advancing to the quarterfinals is money that was already taken into account into the season. And if Barcelona they don't get those wins against Napoli, then what, you, you know what's going to happen? It's going to happen in the summer where we're going to have to go play meanly, meaningless friendlies. For example, like the one we played against Dallas, FC Dallas, in or, or or the Club America in in you know in December just recently, where, and these players are gonna have to fly um, to America or any other you know preseason tours, and that's the case. You know Barcelona at at this point in moment they need to win to survive, and Xavi, you coming out in the media and announcing your decision, you know you wanted the players to have a reaction, and against uh, uh, Osasuna we did not see a reaction from the team. Barcelona were once again playing. Uh, a poor football, and if Alaves were a better team, Barcelona would have struggled, and we would have come, and we would have conceded, and Barcelona would have then had to, you know, crawl um, our way back into the game as we always do so far throughout, well, for for the entirety of the season. And tomorrow, I I don't think it's going to be anything better. Um, well, I, the only positive that I do want to see is Lamine Mo rested because he's been playing a lot of minutes and Vitor Roque. Hopefully he has a start and l let's see what he can do um, in that game. Uh, but guys, definitely let me know your match predictions ahead of tomorrow's game. How do you guys think that, that game is going to go? Definitely let me know your match predictions down below in the comments sections. And as always, guys, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. As always, guys, remember, like, subscribe, and comment. I'll see you guys.